Well, this is me just to tell you about my friends Mary and Angela, who are my guardian angels, among others, and that they died because they were so beautiful that, that but they their people around them at some point in their lives led them to believe they'd never be good looking enough or perfect enough pretty enough and you know had the women's movement done its thing we wouldn't we would have those two beautiful people with us today my Mary Honey Burley and sweet Angela Angela Katsapas um, Angie worked with my son Jamie for a long time she was lovely she was somehow uh, coaxed away from working with us but she she was wonderful for a long time it was a lovely lovely girl kind very kind sweet nature and genuine a genuine person and but you could tell uh, at times that you no matter how many times you told her she was beautiful she was always worried about the imperfections that she wasn't slim enough she was diabetic too and she, she couldn't understand why because she didn't eat that much and you know for her to succeed in life was to not eat something you know um well i don't know um just shame on society for allowing her to believe that she wasn't just the perfect beauty that she was and uh she took a life she took a life she took a life she's a young woman and she's gone and she's missed and I wish she'd come to me, and I wish she'd spoken to me. So if you're beautiful and you think you're not, don't die. You come and talk to me, or phone the Samaritans, or talk to somebody, but I guarantee you, you don't need to die. You don't need to die if you're not perfect enough or not beautiful enough. It really is inside. There's someone for everyone, and... The thing to do if you're insecure about your looks is to learn to love life anyway. Don't hang all your hopes on finding, you know, Mr. Beautiful who's going to probably beat you up and treat you like rubbish anyway. You, you want to really, really get in touch with nature and animals and lovely things and get into your own life and be independent that way and follow the secret and the law of attraction and that way you will find people who think like you and you will find people uh, and, and have great rich wealthy friendships grow your friendships grow your friends and, and really look after them nurture them and do things because it's it's nice to do things and and don't let anyone talk down to you don't let anyone tell you not to sing or dance or or uh, have fun always have fun if people don't want you to have fun and they put you down it's because they're not happy they're not happy themselves they're really jealous or they're probably psychotic something like that bullies or psycho psychopaths will put you down and they don't think you they would always say to you i didn't mean it like that you know i didn't mean it like that i didn't mean didn't have any intention you know to make you feel bad but um very sensitive people just take remarks and too sometimes a bit too seriously and uh, there you go my friend Mary once came to me and I'm a very messy person anyone will tell you I just don't do bloody housework you know why because it's a stereotypical bullshit thing and I've refused to do it since I was a teen I refuse to do housework I will pay someone to do the housework but I won't do it I won't do it you know why because I'm emancipated I'm a free woman equal to any man and I'm also disabled at the moment, which is it's impossible. But even if I wasn't, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> Not unless somebody was coming. If someone's coming to visit, then I'd, do, I'd tidy up. Or if I was, uh, if I was well, yeah, no problem. If I'm well, and you have to do it. But you know, generally, I hate it. I hate it like any most people really hate the housework, and I wouldn't do it because it just needs to be done. I'd rather pay someone who likes housework, um, preferably a male, and. Uh, you know, it, I've had enough of women being stuck at this sink and in the kitchen, and typical feminist in that way. Um, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't always agree with some feminists. Uh, I'm, I'm an independent uh, woman, and uh, uh, I don't believe anyone should have to do bloody housework. But I've gone off on a tangent. Um, and unless you really like doing housework, don't bother. As long as there's nobody in danger or anything, you know. But um, anyway, so oh, poor Mary. 
Mary came to me, that's right, and she said, um, she looked, she looked really thin, and, uh, I kind of opened the door, let her in, and went back to bed, um, and she, she looked around and looked at mess of my flat, and she said, oh, how can you live like this? And there she was, in tears, if she said that, but not about my mess, she was just, just in tears, and, uh, she, how can you live like this? And I'm looking at her, and she's got her arms wrapped in bandages. And, uh, I said, how can you live like that? You know, she'd, uh, she'd been forced to have her, or she felt forced to have her breasts enlarged because the man she loved uh, wanted them like that. And a few times she did this to herself, apparently. So she ended up taking an overdose. Um, she was my friend since school. And um, we, we had some great times together, really. It was amazing times we shared. And, you know, she wasn't always the best best friend anyone could have, but she she was often there when nobody else was. and. And we shared some great times, and I miss her. I really miss you, Mary. And uh, my Angie, too. Beautiful Angela. Much too young. Uh, who, who helped us through many a, a, a tough spot and um, took my son out for some great times and really loved him and cared about him. And I thank her for that, and I miss her. And just basically, you know, these are two of the most beautiful women and because they felt they weren't perfect, they're not with us anymore. So, uh, I am not, um, I, I, I hate people, actually. I really hate people. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of bad things like this happen to me, and I'm fed up with it. And, uh, I mean, it happened to them. It happened to me, too, you know. Um, I mean, you know my mum, you know, when, a few months after my mum died, they took my kid from me, you know, in a really vicious and violent way, and uh, after having been abused by a scumbag, you know, really awful, awful stuff was has gone on here, um, and, uh, and of course we've got secret courts who want to stay secret because they're covering a whole bunch of corruption, um, and, uh, and evil in there. But uh, anyway, um, I guess what I really wanted to say was, um, please don't uh, don't take your life if you're uh, if you're f not perfect because nobody is. And I think you'll find if you look around at happy couples and things, if you're looking for a, a partnership, I think the happiest couple I ever saw was on some TV thing, and there was a a guy in in some remote Indian kiosk with his missus, and they were kind of wrapped around each other, and they'd been married for about 50 years. And they were really happy. And it was like, you know, they were just remote in selling chocolates or something and uh, wrapped around each other really happy and giggly. And that's the thing to do. It's, it's not about uh, intelligence or acquisition, you know, love. It's about nature. It's about being yourself, being natural and loving things, you know, literally just loving things, loving nature, loving the earth itself. And uh, for me, um, I've got, I love water. I mean, I love waterfalls. I like watching waterfalls and lakes and things. It's not the most exciting pursuit from some, but I mean, I love to watch lakes and rivers and waterfalls. It just does it for me, you know? I just love to watch them. And, uh, and nature programs and things, you know, preferably, you know, really leafy type thing. Anyway, that's it. It's just please, please, um, Get into Buddhism and mindful meditation, that sort of thing. It's very comforting and uh, it helps you to bypass the impulse thing as well. If you, Once you've, you've um, got to that point in life, I mean, I've been through stages where I've been so ill and I've managed to get through it by being using mindful meditation, which basically means you don't act on impulse. You know, you can feel an impulse even to die, an impulse... Um, to, and I'll probably have to give in to that at some point, but, you know, you, you, once you can get rid of the 
impulse uh, you can got impulse control you've pretty much got emotional maturity and that really helps so many people around you and, and so many things so anyway lots of love to to everybody who's who's worried about not being perfect i am very far from perfect and i don't care okay lots of love